Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I am set on using up some of my white scrap cardstock. Now, I kind of have a collection sitting on my desk of all different sizes when I've had to cut bits off or cut up custom sized cards or just anything. And don't get me wrong, there are lots and lots of ways to use these and this is just one way. When I get quite a collection of something, I tend to focus on it and to kind of clear that focus, I need to use it and move it and move it along. So I have all these different size pieces of cardstock here. I'm going to be using two different inks today and that's it. And this is actually going to create two separate cards. So on the right is the Versafine Onyx Black ink and on the left was the Medieval Blue color in the Versafine Clear range. And then I just went through my stencil stash and picked out a whole lot of stencils that I thought might work and honestly these are probably just favorites. There's probably the reason. Some dots and snow falling, some bricks, some diamonds, some um, words, just anything I was going to go through and all I'm going to do is ink up through these stencils just the most basic and plain stenciling and some of them I kind of shift them around to get the part of the stencil that I want and then I'm going to be even uh, pretty terrible here because I'm going to do the blue first on most of the stencils and then I won't even wash the stencil before I add my black ink on top that way <laughs> it creates less work for me and these aren't even perfect. I mean, some of them, you can see I've actually smudged that bit up the top there. But honestly, all I want to do is go through and use up all these pieces of uh, cardstock scraps and stencil all of them. And then I'm going to make a bunch of cards. I'm going to show you a few finished ones at the end of today. But honestly, after uh, I had finished uh, filming this video, I just went ahead and just kept going. I found a pattern that I liked. I found a rhythm that I liked. And I just kept going. And it was fantastic. I used these all up. Up. I actually ended up making a set of cards out of them and they have already gone out of my stash. <laughs> one of my family members popped by and that was the one that they were after. They picked up all of these and were like perfect. So here is the brick one and just to change up the looks a little bit I actually popped this on an angle and then I'm going to use some mint tape just so that I don't go where I shouldn't for the minute. Then I'm going to shift the bricks along and carry on the pattern. Now they actually don't line up perfectly. It's actually not a stencil that you can do that with. But you know where there's a will there's a way. We can make it work and I made it work pretty good. I think it looked absolutely fine and unless you kind of looked intense and very very close you would never tell that it wasn't intended to just carry on that way. So I think uh, it worked out pretty fine in the end and again all of these even though I'm not showing them I did them all with the blue and then all with the black so this one is the kind of script uh, these are really old but most of them are from the crafters workshop I will link any that I can find but just go through your stencil stash just use up any of those papers even you could use papers that had um, that you used as you know scraps and wipe off for uh, jelly printing you could stencil on top of those you could do stencil layering you could go through your pattern paper you could go through paper pads and even just find uh, prints right through those but I am just using up my stash today and these are what I kind of came out with some of them I did black and blue on the same one just so I could kind of cut it in half and it was really easy. Others I did pretty much a black and a blue of, um, yeah, most of the options. So just did enough to get me through. Then this is the stamp set that is going to be focusing on. This is called Inspiring by Vicky Booten. This is a cheaper, lower price point. This is, I think, maybe six US dollars for the stamp set and it's gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to stamp out just using the exact same colors. So the blue and then the black. And I'm going to stamp out two of each, two smaller flowers, two larger flowers, and two of the leaves. Now, the reason I chose these ones is because I am leaving these completely as they are. And I like that they have so much detail in the flowers. So I didn't want to choose ones that were kind of completely empty because I felt like that kind of was a little bit too much empty space. So I like these ones that have all those sketchy kind of details and are really filled in finer details for the flowers. 
Once I had stamped out a blue panel and a black panel, I'm adding some clear embossing powder over top. Because these are both pigment ink, they are going to smudge really easily. Um, I could have heat set them in things that would have worked perfectly fine too. But I like to secure this because any steps that I can do in my card making that ensure um, no smudges and <laughs> mistakes, then I will take those steps. Then, because I don't think there are coordinating dies for these, but I never really buy coordinating dies anyway, so I'm going to fussy cut out these images, but even with these leaves I'm just showing you, I just go straight around the edges and they look fine, even though there is kind of that little crinkly detail, pop straight around the edges and I'm good to go. Once I have cut all of these out, they are looking really good, and this is when I can kind of start assembling everything and getting things together. So I am going to cut these down. Obviously you can see some of them have torn edges and all sorts. Even the torn edges I'm going to keep because you can kind of make that a feature of another cut. And then I just picked some patterns that kind of went together. Maybe even didn't go together. I tried to kind of pick a bolder pattern that was going to go through the middle. And then a lighter pattern that would be at the top. And then I was just planning to have a plain white piece of paper down the bottom. And that's where I would be able to stamp my sentiment and things and make it nice and clear. Now honestly I kind of thought about measuring these and it crossed my mind just there <laughs> and if I can get away with it in my card making I'm one of those people who tend not to like to measure. Uh, I like doing things kind of quick and fast and just seeing how I go. So I didn't measure these. I did just kind of cut off strips of what I wanted or what I thought. Uh, would look good so if you are a measuring person then go for gold but I was really just pretty happy with how these turned out anyway. Now I have got a little piece of copy paper underneath there and that is just something so that I have uh, something to glue these onto. Now I started gluing this thinking I'd put it this way up but then I changed my mind because the dots are thicker down the bottom so I did put down my non-stick mat because at this point I had glue everywhere on the back and that little piece of copy paper is not big enough to cover the back it's really just something that holds my pieces in place and kind of glues them all together. Um, and then from here it would have been smart if I had gotten out my uh, stacking rectangle dies and probably have kind of cut out a rectangle from the center but just because it was nice and easy I actually just cut these using my trimmer. Moving on to the black ink card now and I'm going to keep that same uh, brick stencil for the middle and then the plane down the bottom and then I chose to go with the script up the top. I will trim these down so as I said I will be able to use the scraps and things from these uh, later on. And this is absolutely my favorite trimmer. I've had a couple, been through a couple, but uh, this is definitely my go-to. I love this one. It does have the arm that extends out. I love all the little lines. I love the tracks. The blades stay sharp for a really good amount of time. And I use these a lot. <laughs> As you can tell, I put out a video every other day. Every second day I put out a video. So uh, there is a lot of card making that happens in my little station. And my trimmer holds up really well to that. It's a really good price point. It's not one of the super duper fancy ones and I like that. I like simple and efficient in most of my card making tools. Now I did just put a little matting layer down there and I am being a bit careful because these are all pigment inks and as I said I'm going to try and not smudge these at all um, <laughs> which would be a mild miracle for me but um, I'm trying my best to kind of keep my hands off that wet edge um, because I didn't take the time to heat set it at all. I'm using some matte medium that is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. It's a really strong glue and I know that it's going to dry completely clear. Um, so if any smushes out the side or anything, then I don't have to worry about it at all. And then I just kind of come to arrange the flowers how I think I want them to go on here. I'm going to end up using two big ones, one small and then one of the leaves. I did decide that I needed to stamp my sentiment to make sure that there was room for it. So I'm going to use the all the birthdays, all my birthdays uh, stamp set from Concord and Ninth. And if I were to recommend one birthday stamp set, this one is it. This is one that is actually one of those stamp sets that would be great to have in your stash. I have absolutely used this over and over and over again. 
maybe in most of my videos I just it is a really good stamp set if you're looking for a birthdays it's got lots of different fonts lots of different sizes really everything that I need um, in my card making anyway so I did use a little scrap piece of paper there to mask off just that little tail of the Y so it didn't go on my border um, and then I'm using a small happy with that kind of scripty birthday font but yeah a really really good stamp set I must admit very glad that I purchased that one and then I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape on the back of two of the flowers on the small one and one of the large ones and then one of them will sit nice and flat if you were going to be mailing these and you wanted to keep them all flat then that would work too or if you were going to kind of uh, pop them in a set and they needed to go in like a little box um then you could keep the foam tape off but a little bit was fine here and then I'm going to add just one of the leaves now I'm not worried that I'm not using all of the things I fussy cut as I said I carried on card making after this um, so I ended up using all of those things that I fussy cut out anyway and I just did these in a whole range of colors and as I said my family member popped in and snapped these up and they are already gone out of my little stash so these ones were popular um, I'm just going to put one leaf in I did think about putting two and I quite like that but I just felt like the image was kind of hiding all of that brick from behind um, so I just left it with one which I was happy with snipped off a little bit of the excess so I could kind of pop it down behind where that foam tape was and then these are my finished card for today this is just using one color of ink and we've used up all our scrap pieces of white paper to create those pieces with our stencils there is one in black which is a slightly larger border to it I made that one three and three quarters by five inches um, but the overall cards are the same size and thank you so much for joining me today please give me a thumbs up hit that like button and leave me a comment down below subscribe if you're interested in this content and I will see you in the next video thanks bye